I am Tiana. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about how to use a stethoscope to listen to cardiac sounds and how to find the apical pulse. This video comes to you by request from one of my fantastic subscribers, Karen Pewter. Hi babe, I hope that you enjoy this video. And if I didn't pronounce your last name correctly, I'm so sorry. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know. Um, okay, so stay tuned. First, let's talk a little bit about stethoscopes. Today, I am using the Kela Cardiology Scope, and it has their traditional chest piece. It has the diaphragm on one side and a nice deep bell on the other side. If you wanna know more about stethoscopes and which one is my favorite, check my stethoscope, check out my video about stethoscopes. I'll link it down below. I will also be showing you the stethoscope that I use at work, and that is the Lippmann Master Cardiology. I love this stethoscope because it has the tunable diaphragm. And so when you're listening to the landmarks that I'm gonna to talk to you about in just a minute, you wanna to listen to each landmark for five seconds each with both your bell and your diaphragm. But if you have a tunable diaphragm, instead of going through each landmark with the diaphragm and then going back through each landmark with the bell, you can just use your tunable diaphragm to use firm pressure to listen to your high pitched sounds for five seconds and then lighter pressure to hear those low sounds for five seconds instead of using the diaphragm to go through all of them once and then using the bell to go through a second time. You just run through all of it at the same time. It cuts out a little bit of time and makes it a little bit easier. I highly recommend the tunable diaphragm for that reason. And every nurse that I know who has a tunable diaphragm loves it. And every nurse who I know who doesn't have one wishes that they did. Um, okay, so where are those cardiac landmarks? To go through that, I have my favorite study buddy, Mr. Bones here. Guys, check him out. I have had him for years. He's been my study buddy through so much. Check this out. Oh my God. You can see inside he has, it's anatomically correct. He has all these arteries and intestines. Oh. I oh, love this guy, he's amazing. When you think of cardiac sounds, you think of the classic lub-dub, lub-dub, or S1 and S2. S1 is the lub, S2 is the dub. Those sounds aren't actually made by the cardiac muscle itself. It's made up by the sound of the valves closing. So S1, the lub, is made up of the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve closing. And then the dub is made up of the pulmonic and aortic valves closing. That's what makes the lub dub, lub dub, S1 and S2. So I know this is super, super nerdy style. I don't know if I've told you, but guys, your girl's kind of a nerd. I know, I'm sorry, but you can benefit from my love of study. <laughs> And you don't have to do all the hard work, just watch my videos. That's not, that's not asking too much, right? <laughs> What's a few videos between friends? Anyways, let's get to it. I'm sorry, I get sidetracked. A common mnemonic that's used to help with memorizing those landmarks is ape to man. The aortic valve can best be heard to the right of the sternum at the second intercostal space. The pulmonic valve can best be heard to the left of the sternal border in the second intercostal space, herbs point, where you can actually hear S1 and S2. So if you're just doing a real quick assessment, right here at herbs point is going to be the best place to do that, and that's to the left of the sternal border in the third intercostal space. The tricuspid valve is best auscultated to the left of the sternal border in the fourth intercostal space, and the mitral valve can best be heard in the fifth intercostal space, and that is midclavicular. So you locate your patient's clavicle, you estimate where the middle is, and you go down to that fifth intercostal space, and that's where you can hear the mitral valve close the best. So S1 and S2, or I'm sorry, S1, S2, and you can hear both S1 and S2, A2 man. In this area, the fifth intercostal space, subclavicular, it's the apex of the heart, and it's where you can best hear 
the apical pulse. When you're obtaining your patient's heart rate, the apical pulse is the most accurate, non-invasive heart rate that you could obtain. You find that fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line on your patient, and you listen with your stethoscope for each lub dub. Each lub dub counts as one. Lub and dub don't count separately. And so you listen there for a full minute. Normal heart rate range is from 60 to 100. Guys, I really hope that this video helped you and you can go to clinical or to your normal practice and listen to your patient's heart sounds with confidence. Subscribe down below. I'd love to have you along for my journey. <laughs> Thank you guys. Bye.